If you've ever wondered if there are more liquor stores in predominantly African-American neighborhoods, research is here to say that there is. In 2013, Dr. Levice and Dr. Wallace wanted to look at the relationship between liquor stores and African-American communities by answering the question if liquor stores were found more in predominantly black communities compared to predominantly white communities and if low-income African-Americans were at a greater risk for alcohol exposure because of these liquor stores. The idea that communities all throughout the United States remain racially segregated is nothing new, with plenty of research to suggest that not only does it remain an issue to this day, but that this racial segregation leads to racial differences in health outcomes. And while liquor stores are a prominent feature of the overall social infrastructure, their effects are destructive to the communities in which they operate. But maybe you're asking yourself how liquor stores can be detrimental to the communities. Where there is physical availability for alcohol sale and consumption, there are alcohol-related problems. Look, you think I'm messing around? I don't think you're messing around. According to Wallace and Brown, Physical availability is defined as the region and number of establishments that sell alcoholic beverages, as well as if the beverages are sold off-premise, which are the liquor stores, or on-premise consumption, which are restaurants and bars. Back in 1976, Harper suggested that, to some extent, the high accessibility of alcohol in low-income urban black communities are connected to the large number of alcohol-related problems experienced by African Americans. The fact that liquor stores are unjustly concentrated in black communities is important because these outlets will sell alcohol that is ready to be consumed on the spot, meaning that it's chilled and served in large volumes, for example in 40 and 64 ounces, than you would find in a typical restaurant or bar. Dr. Levest and John Wallace also noted from a study by Dr. Dawkins back in 1983 that other establishments, for example restaurants, which are more socially acceptable compared to liquor stores, were more likely to be found in predominantly white communities. Now that we know that liquor stores are more significantly concentrated in predominantly black communities, are racial and income status related to the number of liquor stores found in any given community? Dr. Levest and John Wallace would suggest that they are. More specifically, that communities that are both low income and predominantly black have significantly more liquor stores compared with other communities. Something that the researchers questioned was whether the demand for the products sold at these liquor stores would be affecting the supply, or vice versa. They couldn't answer the question without additional research. One proposal or example they gave comes from research on crack cocaine use, which indicates that availability can increase use. So now we pose the question to you, what do you think? Do you think that the demand for alcohol at liquor stores affects the supply, or is it the other way around? And what about helping solve this issue? How do you think we could help in reducing the occurrence of liquor stores in African American communities and the alcohol related problems that come with this alcohol availability? Leave your comments below and we'll catch you next time.